So hi there, grandchildren. How are you guys? I just feel like this is really dark. This is Nana. She's going to read you a story today. I'm going to read you a story about Peter Rabbit. And since it's going to be Easter in a couple months, I thought maybe it'd be kind of fun. And I used to write, read Peter Rabbit and stories to your mom and dad. To your mom and dad. I didn't read them to your dad, but I read them to your mom. And it was Beatrix Potter was the writer. So I'm going to read you the story, one of the stories from Peter Rabbit. And it's called The Tales of Peter Rabbit, Benjamin Bunny, Squirrel Nutkin, Two Bad Mice, and Jeremy Fisher. I don't know who that is, but we'll figure it out because we're going to read the story today. So once upon a time, there were four rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. There they are. They're kind of pretty rabbits. You like bunnies, don't you, Libby? I like bunnies. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit, one morning... You may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put into a pie by Mrs. McGregor. So she's giving him instructions. Did your mama give you instructions for the day? I'll bet Eli's mom and Thad's mom gave them instructions for school. Now run along and don't get into mischief, because I'm going out, said Mama. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket in her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Currants are kind of like raisins, you guys. Yeah. They're red instead of brown like raisins. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. Mmm. Blackberries sound good, don't they? But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. He didn't open the gate. He squeezed under the gate. Was he being a naughty bunny? Yes, indeed he was. First he ate some lettuce, and then some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. Oh, my. See him? He's getting into stuff he's not supposed to be in, isn't he? And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. Okay, well, let's see what happens to him. But around the end of the cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Oh, dear. What did his mama tell him to do? Stay out of the garden. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling, Stop! Thief! Was Peter a thief? Had he stolen something? Well, sure he did. He stole Mr. McGregor's vegetables. Peter was most dreadfully frightened, and he rushed for all over the garden, for he'd forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. He's scared, isn't he? He's a little tiny rabbit. Mr. McGregor's a great big dude. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have gotten away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into a gooseberry net and gotten caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, and it was quite new. They put... They put nets over gooseberries so the birds don't eat them. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Try harder, they said. See, they're talking to him. They're encouraging him. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Wow, he got away. And he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. What is that? That's a watering can, isn't it? And where did Peter go? He jumped into a watering can. 
He's not the sharpest tool in that shed right now, is he? Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden beneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each and every one. Presently, Peter sneezed. Curtichu! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time at all. Oh, dear. Gave himself away, didn't he? Oh, dear. And he tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor. And he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Well, Peter got away, didn't he? But he lost his shoes and he lost his coat. Peter sat down to rest and he was out of breath and trembling with fright. And he, was not the le he had not the least idea which way to go. He was also very damp from sitting in a watering can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. What was he looking for, guys? He was looking for the gate, wasn't he? The one he squeezed under. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked. And there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorsteps, carrying peas and beans to her family in the woods. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she couldn't answer him. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. He's just a little bunny rabbit. He's just, just a little bunny rabbit. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, and he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very still. But now and then, the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. She's a pretty white cat, though, isn't she? He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch, 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 scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeked over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing his onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Way over there. What's going to happen? Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor saw, caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. He got away. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. There's Peter's shoes in his jacket. Yikes. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice sand, soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mom was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in two weeks. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during that evening. His mother put him to bed and made some tea, and she gave him a dose, one teaspoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. They were good little bunnies, and they got to eat. The end. I hope you like this. I hope this goes out. Nana and Papa love you guys very much, and we pray for you every day. Bye.